Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. My name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this uh, daily Hindu analysis video. In the morning, these video videos come. In the evening, the PIB videos come. PIB is off for uh, Sundays and other days uh, it's on. And uh, you follow these lessons. Important MCQs are there. Important explanations are there. And today is Sunday. It is a totally exam-oriented session. I'm going to tell you some uh, uh, things about the, pre uh, the prelims uh, paper of the last year. From where these questions came, what was the context. And in the last month, how you should prepare about the current affairs what kind of uh, uh, approach you should apply here that is extremely important so let's start the lesson i will not waste much time here i'm already late and uh, these are the numbers there you can call and you can ask for these pendrive courses on study iq's website and all are updated one created by experts saving lakhs of your rupees and 60 percent off is also going on so you know the dedication of study iq and uh, it's really a important help for you people now the question nsso 70th round situation assessment survey of agricultural households this question came because a lot of things were going on uh, the talks regarding the doubling of farmers income okay so doubling of farmers income was a huge issue and still it is going on many steps they had taken uh, first they brought uh, soil health card then uh, these crop insurance scheme and all these issues they all were a step regarding doubling farmers income due to the increased suicide cases in the farmers uh, uh, group and uh, a lot of problems they are facing it's acute crisis in the farmers uh, the, the agricultural field so this question remained very very relevant now see when we talk about this doubling of farmers issue what do we need we need data and data was there in the nss round nsso is the prime agency there and they uh, did 59th uh, round in 2003 and it was the updated one as a 70th round in 2013 for whole year of 13 it went on and they brought up this situation assessment survey of agricultural household so directly there was no data regarding that in any uh, current affair but in articles in some suggestions in some problem identification a lot of uh, uh, scholars they talked about this nsso 70th round so from there this question uh, uh, came here and you see when the examination is going for a tougher level then these kind of uh, depth is important and you see this is how the the hindu papers articles and the pib data becomes extremely crucial here questions are direct from uh, here and you see the data uh, which if you talk about uh, the uh, ministry of statistical uh, report of this association assessment survey by nsso then these things are given directly there that rajasthan has the highest percentage share of agricultural household that's correct and in kerala little over 60 percent of agricultural household reported to have received maximum income from sources other than agricultural activities so these two things are given here you see this particular table in the chapter 3 of the report rajasthan 78.4 percent maximum number of households the biggest percentage here kerala only 27.3 percent so they are asking for the extremities the maximum and the minimum percentage so kerala has over 60 percent uh, dependence on non-agricultural income because 27 percent is the percentage of rural household only and 78 percent is with rajasthan so it is the topmost state if we talk about the dependency on the agricultural field so this was the important highlight of the report and it also talked about the obc percentage here it's this report the same report in the chapter 3 says uh, 45 percent of the total agricultural household in the country they belong to other backward classes so it was not a 60 percent it was only 45 percent so these data are crucial and you see the issue of data is going on uh, the uh, the data manipulation is a huge issue the new methods of GDP and new numbers of uh, growth and all and a lot of allegations are there that uh, agricultural true numbers are not open employment uh, data is not uh, given in properly and they are not being consistent about revelation of these reports so this issue became much more important here okay so how much importance do you give to official information that was also being checked by upsc so that is how this makes the important context of this question and you see this was one of the toughest level of the question this year and that is why uh, the cutoff uh, went down uh, below 100 level 98 was the cutoff and this was the reason that uh, these five star question means uh, the maximum level of uh, uh, toughness you may say question was not tough if the approach you know then this question was very simple because the most important reports we should know about the highlights of these these reports so you should know about the agricultural uh, uh, reports of the uh, hi these uh, highlights of these important agricultural reports 
so this is how this became important okay you can see here now with reference to india's decision to levy an uh, equalization tax of 6% this issue appeared when uh, in 2016 june they imposed this uh, important equalization tax a levy of this uh, duty and uh, india was the first country so when india was first in something then this became important and you see the advertisement is a huge issue these days and a main advertisement is done on the uh, the social media websites and all other uh, uh, internet platforms so google uh, twitter all these are very important websites where maximum amount of advertisement is traffic if you talk about the political parties they have surpassed all other companies in the uh, terms of advertisement they are doing maximum on these websites so these websites or these uh, platforms are earning a lot and all money is going to these websites and they are not uh, paying anything as a tax and they are making huge profits here so this equalization tax of 6% was imposed by india here and uh, you see it is it was not introduced as a part of income tax this was straight away uh, given in the particular data and non resident entities that offer advertisement services in india can claim a tax credit no they cannot claim these two lines were taken as it is okay from the financial bills draft financial bill came uh, regarding this it was not under the income tax act a separate financial bill came regarding that so the these two lines were uh, taken as they were uh, there so when tough levels you find uh, in the questioning in the upsc that always uh, indicates that these things are taken as it is from a particular uh, bill a draft or a recommendation or a particular provision in the constitution so these kind of things so the provisions are also very very important so both are wrong options and d was the answer here okay it was not making the part of income tax and this issue appeared in the industry section of the uh, hindu newspaper you see india becomes the first country to propose a levy on digital economy 6% online adver advertisement services and it said the level is not introduced as a part of income tax act straight away it was uh, seen here and india cannot uh, these uh, services which are operating in india cannot claim a tax credit in their home country under the double taxation avoidance agreement double taxation avoidance agreement means if mnc is there it has uh, multiple offices in uh, various countries if it is going to pay taxes in all the countries then what they are going to earn so it's an agreement between countries that if uh, the company is established here and it has it has office in your country then at one place only it will pay taxes so that would be arranged by us so this is a double taxes and avoidance agreement okay so according to it they cannot claim tax credit in their home country thus this tax would be paid in india and now this was uh, a kind of a big problem for startups because these companies google youtube they said that we will not bear this burden because we will not pay uh, additional taxes in india we are paying taxes here so that's all and it is not under dta so that's not acceptable 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 to us so give this money to us and arrange this tax to the government uh, for yourself so startups they had to arrange this money uh, for the tax payment so uh, this was the pressure on the startups and startup india this scheme was under a lot of scrutiny because uh, many of startups they are shut down now and uh, they are not finding uh, a very very uh, bright uh, opportunistic future uh, here some of them are uh, working great but uh, many of them they are finding it very difficult so in angel tax venture taxes these are associated phenomena with startups this year angel tax remain very very important so uh, read about that so this is how the questions are coming and i'm talking about the most difficult questions otherwise all other are direct questions so these are not an issue but these questions are issues so this is way with, with this approach you can attempt 100% questions in the ups examination okay now google and other digital services providers generate over 560 crore rupees so after implementation of one year 560 crore rupees were collected from that so this data came in uh, all the newspapers leading newspapers on 27th of april so this is how it was important but the these uh, important lines that uh, it was not introduced as an income tax act and uh, they cannot claim credit so these issues were appeared in 2016 data so you needed to uh, search for the basis of it because it was the first time collection 560 crore rupees uh, data and it was appearing in the uh, pib data also next the fiscal responsibility and budget management act 
when we talk about uh, this frbm act of 2003 the most important act in this area and uh, we need to talk about fiscal uh, deficit also and this is a very famous data in many many articles we uh, have been discussing it uh, for the last uh, 3 months and uh, they were discussing it when the amendment was brought up in 2015 in this particular act so in 2016 17 18 consistently they were talking about this particular data that overall 60% is the combined uh, uh, limit okay for the government state plus center and for the center specially it is only 40% of their uh, gdp percentage okay so this data was very common and next center government has domestic liabilities of more than 40% it was not 21% so this data was also very much direct in many many reports many many articles we discussed when uh, uh, editorials were being discussed so this data was very normal next uh, according to article 293 it is straight away given and it, this was again discussed in these uh, same articles that uh, constitution of india says in article 293 that it is mandatory for the state to take the central government's consent for raising any loan if the former owes any outstanding liabilities to the latter okay so this is uh, the thing and 1 and 3 were correct option and second was no, wrong here okay you can see here uh, c rangarajan and uh, in this article n k singh himself who was the chairman of this committee they both said about these data that uh, uh the the the, the uh, gdp percentage and the important uh, deficit or uh, sorry not deficit the debt debt to gdp ratio for the central government it is more than 40% it is uh, around uh, 46.8% it was reset to 46.8% and actual was more than 49% so this is way more than the limit of 40% okay and for the states also we discussed that states are also shooting these norms in some states it is less than 20% in some states it is more than 30 40% so this was the condition and the limit was set to 60% for combined data states plus uh, uh, center and uh, 40% center and 24 states so this was the thing okay so this data was very very common now about the Uh, words uh, these are these are found uh, today in the newspaper and uh, try them into sentences now these three questions were one of the most difficult questions in the question paper so i told you next uh, sunday i'm also going to talk about uh, environment and science and technology questions they are uh, way more direct but these questions they are very specific and they are coming from the current affairs section and the editorial section so that is why i say that uh, do not ever complain about the timing in the hindu paper analysis video because it takes more than 1 hour normally in the starting lessons i was telling you that uh, time is needed because these kind of deep informations are coming but you people said that uh, we cannot go uh, we cannot give this much time and that was bizarre to me because if you are preparing for the ups examination you have to give time to the, to the newspapers and the editorial section because the deep analysis is needed from the mains point of view and from the prelims prelims point of view both and you see for the consistently uh, last 2 3 years these deep questions are coming and they are coming straight away from these articles that are discussing some solutions some recommendations or some data they are giving so these experts are talking about these things so these things become uh, very important okay so this is the way now uh, the data today two workers again uh, died in uh, bengaluru and they were manual scavengers so we need to talk here about the important act related to this uh, issue the manual scavengers and rehabilitation act of 2013 we need to discuss here many people have died uh, this year also so they may ask about the respective act of it and they may talk about the uh, provisions under it okay the way we saw the questions in the last uh, year's paper so this year also they may ask you questions so manual scavenger act this definition is given in this act that who is going to be the manual scavenger any person who has been employed to handle undecomposed human waste from insanitary latrines and open drain or pit or railway tracks so they all will be uh, hailed as manual scavengers because these are not given any professional uh, gear or something as a support as a machinery and any person who may be a regular employee or engaged in some contract labor so they both will be counted as manual scavenger exception only exception is there that any person who has been employed to clean up human waste and does so with the help of the appropriate protective gears so if the protective gears are given then only uh, you can say that uh, he is not a manual scavenger otherwise he is a 
a manual scavenger not a professional cleaner okay and who is responsible the district magistrate and the local authority the municipal authority is responsible for identification here you can see these are also important provisions in this bill in the on the prs website you can know about all the highlights of the important bills so this bill is also given there that uh, uh, it seeks to rehabilitate manual scavenger rehabilitation also is given and provide for their alternative employment this is provision and district magistrate and the local authority shall be implemented authorities and uh, under the bill this will be cognizable and non available offense for the employer okay so this is also given here and these are also important uh, provisions here you should go through all of them and bill has a wider scope and higher penalties than the 1993 act so this is important now many data uh, have appeared this year and uh, in previous years also we have seen this issue so there can be a question in means that many celebrities we uh, look in the listings of the candidates and these parties they give votes because they think that uh, these are famous people and they know that people will vote for them they will not look that about their uh, uh, respective experience in the field they will not look for their uh, particular uh, uh, behavior in a normal public they will not look for their particular conduct and you see many inefficiencies uh, and absenteeism in the parliament not raising these issues not asking questions and not being present in the constituency many times and inefficiencies the we see uh, regarding these kind of candidates so it is not uh, something that we should not uh, give votes to these people or we should not uh, give tickets uh, these parties should not give tickets to these people it is not like that but certainly some merits and some professional criteria should be defined and some some strict punishments should be there if they are uh, violating some norms because they do not know the process they do not uh, uh, know about these things that means it's simply a uh, it's a show off it's a show business it's not a political uh, framework because they do not know anything about the uh, policy uh, making they do not know about the law making they do not know about the constitution of india they do not know about the important economic aspects and various uh, uh, cultures uh, the own ground situations they hardly know about and they are uh, uh, just giving their pictures uh, coming uh, occasionally not being present many times in the constituency and people are always uh, looking to uh, Uh, their uh, meetings and all and uh, uh, most of the times they cannot meet their mps and mlas and all so this is a very common problem so it is not uh, uh, related to a specific party it is related to all the parties these kind of candidates are there in all the parties so it's a very important question so you should ask the, uh, uh, you should uh, write this important question and in the mains examination certainly you may see this question next year okay so these are the important points related to it and uh, you can understand that next jamia milia uh, important institution is there in new delhi and they have developed an ultra sensitive quantum thermometer so the kelvin scale thermometer is there and it can observe minute uh, things here and and minute kelvin level uh, differences it can observe now they may ask you about a science question what is kelvin fahrenheit and celsius these are important scales kelvin scale means Zero Kelvin is absolute zero. It's a theoretical, a uh, lowest possible temperature. Below that, nobody can go. And after that, every activity of the molecules that would be ended. Okay, there would be no activity at zero Kelvin and below that. So these kind of temperatures are are found in the universe sometimes, and it is only theoretically possible. Next, if you want to convert it into Celsius, then two seventy three point one five. you need to add into the celsius value to get the kelvin value so it is 0 degree centigrade then it is 273 kelvin 273.15 kelvin so this is the scale this is the conversion and the conversion between the fahrenheit and the celsius you see uh, we look at the thermometer for uh, our uh, 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 the fever temperatures and all so 98.3 is uh, the normal temperature of the body and that is around 37 degrees uh, celsius so what is the formula if you subtract 32 from the fahrenheit value and you divide it by 1.4 1.8 uh, then you will get the uh, degree celsius value so this is the formula they may ask you about so to convert fahrenheit to celsius this is given here and absolute zero is the theoretical lowest possible temperature and that is zero kelvin okay that means uh, zero kelvin zero degree centigrade is way higher than uh, zero degree kelvin next iit madras has developed optical
character recognition scheme for indian languages nine indian languages you see this text is taken from the sangam literature and this is the ocr technology and this is a particular script in bharati script you see they are giving it a bharati name okay and uh, shrivasa chakravarti's team at iit madras has uh, over the last decade they have developed a unified script for nine indian languages and they are calling it bharati script so they may ask you what is bharati script who has developed it and three tiered structure is there you see there are various uh, words and there are various designs so for all these designs also they are making separate uh, a, a particular characters in the programming and you see normally these things are attached with the consonants so vowels are there consonants are there a e i o u these are vowels and others are consonants so these values of these uh, vowels they are attached to consonants only okay normally if you uh, uh, talk about hindi then if you write hindi then this bindu is uh, attached to ha means it's a consonant it's a vowel so this thing is resolved in this particular ocr concept and bharati script okay there are specific programs for that so that's important and uh, they have taken help from uh, tcs mumbai innovation lab also and uh, that was by iit madras that's important next innovation deficit in neglected disease what are these neglected disease these disease are normally uh, tropical disease and there is a neglect because these countries in the tropical areas they are not very rich maximum richest countries they are present there in the higher latitudes okay america and all these uh, uh, america canada australia and all these other important uh, european countries they are richer countries and they are making high investments in their uh, r&d technology and all which are related related to their common disease so the common disease in the higher latitudes they are different from the common disease of tropical areas so we are struggling more with the uh, these uh, mosquito borne disease and all and these are not a problem in the european countries so their research would be towards their own disease and here uh, countries like india and all other countries they are not able to invest very heavily in our disease so these are uh, these uh, tropical disease they remain neglected many a times so this is how and they find in the neglected disease also india is the fourth largest uh, largest uh, funder of the r&d activities so india is not even first in the tropical disease or in the neglected disease so the share of the market drugs for this disease is very less and you see this is the problem that uh, for malaria for dengue and all these uh, disease uh, we do not have many medications and many vaccines are not available for that right now in the malawi the uh, vaccination for malaria the trials are going on but many disease are out of our approach and we are dependent dependent and many times they are taking lives so these are the issues of neglected disease and uh, this class is actually problematic because whatever research and development that is there which, which it is there with the pharmaceutical companies and which are based normally in western countries and developed countries so these cases are normally in a way orphaned to these uh, labs and they are doing limited scale and uh, limited samples are available for uh, for their researchers so we are dependent on these big companies so our companies and our academia in our universities also we need these innovations we need these experimentations otherwise uh, this thing is not possible when these things started in the end of the 90th century then uh, the experiments were happening in the labs in universities and all then these things were taken by pharmaceutical companies and they hired all these researchers and all and now we are dependent on their research only so the, in the academia in the universities and all the researchers are not there in and in, in the case of uh, countries like india the tropical countries these researchers are not much supported and the case of our uh, important r d sector and our labs in universities the condition is very pathetic so it's a huge problem next depression affects your memory that is uh, for sure this data is given by national center for uh, biological sciences bengaluru and you see in upsc they may ask you the impacts of a depression you see the mood is disturbed and your normal physical activities are disturbed your uh, hormones and chemicals in the brains they are also altered because of the uh, different medical con uh, mental condition and all these things they interfere with your normal bodily working your peristaltic movement of your uh, intestine that is also disturbed and you are not di di digesting food properly 
and uh, uh, your organs are not working properly your blood pressure your important circulation of the blood that is also affected because all these things are nervous uh, controlled things and nerves are controlled by your brain by your uh, uh, chemical activity in your brain and your mood affects everything so this is how depression is very much a fatal thing and for a longer period of time it can create bipolar disorders what are bipolar disorder when a person is sometimes very much depressed sometimes it is totally excited and uh, uh, maybe very angry maybe very much uh, uh, energetic and uncontrollable so this is bipolar disorder and these can be the results of depression so many many consequences almost all kinds of problems can appear after depression next the case of chikori FSSAI, the Food Safety and Security Authority of India, that is established by a particular act, a statutory body, FSSAI Act was there, and coffee planters issue is there. Coffee planters are struggling with the pricing issues, issues, and uh, the companies are hardly struggling, but the uh, small farmers they are struggling a lot in the southern part of India. Mainly, the cultivation of coffee is done, and Karnataka is producing 71% of the coffee, and Kerala is 21%, Tamil Nadu is 5%, and some in Andhra Pradesh and other areas also but maximum amount is there in the southern part of india and these coffee orchards they are with the forest area because india's coffee is shaded coffee it is grown in shades unlike the coffee of africa's and other countries that is grown in sunlight but ours is grown in, grown in the shades of trees in the forest so that is of high quality and india's coffee is very famous we are exporting 80 percent of our coffee okay and uh, 70% is bound for Germany and Russia, Spain, Belgium, Slovenia, US, these countries. And there are 2.5 lakh coffee growers in India and 98% of them are small growers. So they are facing the brunt of it. They are facing the problem of it. And uh, uh, the production is uh, stagnant and the issue is, price, is the main issue is the pricing. 49% of coffee powder sold in the country. Uh, that is having a chicory content uh, sorry uh, I said it wrong the coffee which, which is being sold in India 49% is the chicory content chicory is a alternative to the coffee uh, content you may say because the caffeine is not uh, there so 49% chicory is uh, added so it's not a pure coffee it's a different thing so these farmers were demanding that uh, this uh, particular condition that 49 percent is there that should be lowered and now fsi said that uh, bring it to 30 percent so 70 percent should be the pure coffee content the caffeine content so that more procurement of the coffee from these farmers is there and the these uh, particular uh, small farmers which are lacks in number they are supported because more coffee would be uh, sold then so this will happen when the chicory content would be allowed for a lesser percentage now it is half of the amount so that's the issue and chikori is a cheap product and that is added to coffee and india's uh, coffee is of two types Ar arabica and robusta traditionally it was arabica only but after that coffee rust the famous fungus of the coffee that came and that destroyed the these uh, particular uh, plants of coffee so it's a big problem so now they are moving towards robusta coffee and that is not affected by this rust so now the bigger production is there for the robusta and lesser is for the arabica but traditionally arabica was the bigger one and you see uh, arabica means it came from arab it came from mainly the yemen country the crisis is going on so yemen country brought this uh, uh, particular type and baba budan was a sufi saint in karnataka he came he went to arabica arabian area and from yemen he brought this arabica coffee and uh, he actually planted it in, in uh, Chandragiri Hills, which is now called as Baba Budan Hills because the uh, association with the Baba Budan, the Sufi saint. So, Chandragiri Hills is the uh, old name, and Baba Budan Hills is the medieval name and the present name. And these are famous for iron mining. Remember that iron is found in the Baba Budan Hills, and the Mangalore port is the nearby port, and they are exporting it to Japan. Okay, so Baba Budan Hills, very important question. Next, pharma sector is also uh, getting important growth in exports. 11% growth, growth is there. There are bulk drugs as the final drugs. You can see in the picture, these are bulk drugs and they are sold and uh, imported. And intermediate products are also there. Means maybe it is not a final drug. Some other important chemical molecule is there that is uh, intermediate drugs and some other drug is going to be made out of these intermediate products. So that is 
a different category so uh, they are uh, finding growth here in the last year and 13.56 billion dollar was the export and that dominated the 18 uh, 19 uh, phase okay you see india is a huge market india's pharmaceutical industry is very great in generic medicine uh, production generic drugs which are a copy of original uh, expensive drugs of the west and uh, these are produced uh, with a cheaper uh, price and because the poor people cannot afford the expensive drugs these generic drugs are made these are a perfect copy of the original expensive drugs okay and you see ip intellectual property and other important uh, uh, trademark and many issues are there always uh, these are the biggest areas where patents or trade and all all these issues are there and the issues are going into wto appellate tribunals always okay they may ask you about the pharmaceutical export uh, promotion council of india also that is it a statutory body is it a constitutional body tell me the answer next pakistan suspends anti polio drive you see there were attacks on immunization workers there why it all started when uh, america uh, caught laden in 2011 and they started this catching with a fake uh, immunization drive and with this uh, immunization drive that was a fake one they came to know that uh, he is uh, hidden in abbottabad so when this thing uh, became open and they came to know these terror groups are like taliban they came to know that uh, this is how they cracked this uh, information so they started protesting about these immunization drives and they said that in uh, islam it is not allowed these in ingredients which are there in these uh, important vaccines these things are not allowed in our religion so they heavily protested about these things and you see because of some uh, additional uh, uh, side effects of these uh, vaccinations many kids are finding it very difficult some are having high fevers and some are uh, vomiting and all, all these uh, uh, side effects are there of this vaccine and now they blamed all these things to these vaccines and they are saying that uh, they want to kill our kids they want to make us important and uh, they want our population to die down and this is why this immunization is going on but the reality is that afghanistan pakistan and nigeria only three countries are left in this world which are having polio cases other countries even india it has eradicated polio from their uh, respective countries and only three countries are left and the maximum cases are there in the maximum uh, undeveloped regions of afghanistan so they need this vaccination and imran khan also talked about these things these things that uh, pakistan is struggling with poverty uh, the disease issue and all these troubles so they are uh, actually uh, suspending these anti polio drives after many fatal incidents happened and many lives were taken by mobs okay so these immunization workers they were finding it very difficult to immunize kids and you see uh, the kid is showing its uh, blue mark blue ink mark the way we show it in our elections so this is to be sure that they have taken vaccine here so it's a huge problem so it's a mains question and it's a international question also because these things are related to terror groups because they are protesting against these immunization drives calling them a threat to their existence next data theft with hits ayushman bharat and the same case we were discussing some days back that issue with the data privacy is there because these government agencies they are they are demanding all these sensitive informations and the data protection is not available that much uh, with these bodies because data protection laws are missing in india and they are not very much great some provisions are there but you see then security issues are there and they need some kind some form of surveillance some form of uh, uh, security also so we cannot deny our information to the uh, government authorities but you see the case is there that government officials and uh, these uh, bodies we are hardly uh, find them uh, finding them uh, trustworthy because these because of these data leaks now these datas you see we all know who has uh, breached these datas and who want these datas these private companies they want all these informations these uh, important diagnostic uh, uh, companies and all uh, and all these uh, private hospitals and all they want the important medical profile of the people they want to know that in this region this disease is uh, uh, dominant and uh, normally people have these kind of uh, medical profiles these kind of troubles they are uh, having so they would 
develop those kind of drugs they would develop those those kind of treatments they would develop those kind of testings and all so that would be beneficial for these uh, companies so they will know about your profile so this is a kind of a thing that we want to keep private and specific treatments we are taking from doctors we do not want to uh, reveal these informations to other companies or, and all so that they cannot manipulate us otherwise they are taking everything you are typing you are searching anything in the google or in some website after after two three days you will see the same advertisement going on on your uh, facebook page or somewhere else so they are collecting your uh, personal informations many times and in the mobile apps they are taking everything okay uh, in the starting when you are installing these apps they are asking for your permission to take uh, uh, the access uh, uh, in your uh, gallery in your uh, important apps in your important data gmail data they they all want it so that they can know everything about you and according to that they can uh, make a nice profile and they can suggest everything according to you and they will make profits and they will uh, raise these uh, uh, prices of the things that you need most so this is the issue with the data privacy and that is why the protests are there that uh, the privacy and the demanding of all in sensitive information by the government is not legitimate but you see some things are needed so we need to bring very robust laws we need to bring very robust data protection systems otherwise these things would be really a problem and now these things are giving evidences that uh, data breach is very much possible in india and it's very very simple in india for these uh, companies and how much honest governments and these uh, officials are there are many many evidences regarding india okay so that's a problem we need these solutions we need more data protection here next uh, these are the questions important questions and uh, look for the additional data look for the uh, answers here straight away you will find questions from these respective compilations thanks a lot keep watching it was amit sani and pdf you will uh, find here on this group you can send me a request i would approve thanks a lot